welcome back to the channel. Hope you and your families are keeping well. Um, in today's video we're going to be looking to discuss snow foam lances and I'll be looking to discuss um, three of the snow foam lances that I own. Uh, so at the moment I have a, an Autobright Direct snow foam lance. Uh, I own a PA snow foam lance which I purchased through Polish Bliss. Um, I also own an MTM PF22. Um, during the course of this video, um, alongside discussing the, the various snow foam lances that I've got, be looking to discuss um, flow rates and how that can contribute towards you know the consistency of the foam that is produced by um, your pressure washer. Uh, in a, alongside that, we'll be looking at you know the hardness of the water in your area because that has an impact as to how foam um, you know the consistency of the foam that comes out of your lance. Um, and furthermore, we'll be looking at pressure washers because they also have some bearing as to how thick or how you know the, how thick the foam comes out of the lance. Um, the reason why I'm looking to explore that in this video is I um, wanted to share my experience with people who are new to detailing. Uh, so when I first actually got into detailing, the first pressure washer I bought uh, was a cheaper and cheerful one, it was a Karch K2. Uh, but having researched into the matter a bit further, I realised that you know it didn't have sufficient pressure to generate you know the consistency and thickness of foam that I was looking for. So more about that later on in the video. Um, but yeah, let's move on to um, the snow foam lances that I've currently got. So in my hand here I've got the um, Auto Bright Direct snow foam lance. It's actually, um, although it does say Auto Bright Direct, I'll show you on the bottle, it is embossed on here. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see it. I'll move it up here. It says Auto Bright Direct just about. Oh, I'm a bit of focusing issues. There you go, it says AD Auto Bright Direct. Okay, on there. Um, so basically, this, although it says Auto Bright Direct, it's actually um, a PA snow foam lance, which is um, or was one of, probably still is one of the best on the market. Um, I'll be perfectly honest, when I first got into detailing, um, the first pressure washer I bought was a Karch K2. It came with its own foam lance, if you, want to, if you can even be classified as a foam lance to be perfectly honest. Um, it wasn't very good, it was very runny, it's just a standard plastic bottle with some sort of you know, foam nozzle po pointing out of it. Um, it didn't have any adjustment mechanism on the top of it so I wasn't able to control the consistency or the thickness of the foam. Um, having used that for a few times I realised that you know, it's not something that I could use long term. So, you know, following on from that, I um, actually bought a foam lance from Slim's Detailing. Um, actually, when I first got into detailing, I did buy a lot of my equipment from Slim's uh, because they were really helpful. I actually paid a visit down there a couple of times and spoke with Jack and uh, James at the time. Really helpful guys. So following on from, you know, having a conversation with them and, well, not just a conversation with them, but, you know, having looked online, I, I saw that they sold snow foam lances. So I actually bought one from their website. It was okay, it, you know, unfortunately it didn't last very long in the sense that after about two or three uses it started leaking from the cartridge connection here. I think it could be for two reasons. One would could be that, you know, there wasn't that sufficient um, PTFE tape round the thread, so it wasn't able to connect, um, you know, it was a loose connection between the cartridge um, bayonet uh, mechanism and the, um, the the lance itself. Um, the other thing could be it may have blown an O-ring inside, unfortunately, which caused it to you know spew out. Anyway, I wasn't particularly happy with the performance of that lance, which then led me to um, you know carry out some research and find out what is or what was the best snow foam lance on the market at that particular time. And mind you, this is going back four and a half years ago, four and a half five years ago. Um, so at the time when I was doing research, I heard a lot about PA snow foam lances. This wasn't actually the first PA snow foam lance that I actually bought. I actually bought the um, <coughs> this lance. This is also a PA snow foam lance. I'll see if I can get this into focus. Um, it does actually mention it on here. Um, this one I bought from Polish Bliss. So hopefully you'll be able to see it shows... Um, Again, I'm a bit of focusing issues on here, but uh, this is actually a PA foam lance. Um, 
see if it will come into focus. PA made in Italy. There you go. It says PA made in Italy. Apologies, guys. I'm having a bit of focusing issues with the um, with the camera. But um, yeah, this is the first foam lance I actually bought. Uh, well, sorry, first PA foam lance that I bought. And as you can see, it's got a straight bottle. It holds about one liter. Not about, but it does hold one liter of product. Very good snow foam lance. I actually bought it following up watching a review on their website. Um, of the actual PA snow foam lance as well. Uh, very good lance. Um, as you can see, it's got the mechanism here, so as has the auto bright direct, and it's also got the mechanism here. I'll see if I can get this into focus, but basically it, it does have like a plus minus sign on it, and hopefully you can just about make that out, hopefully. And, um, Basically, this is to do with the thickness of the foam, or how dilute, how how diluted you want your solution to be when it comes out. There you go. It says PA, and you've got the plus and minus, and you've got the arrows on there. Okay, so this is a really good mechanism because it allows you to control the thickness of the foam. Okay, so that's what the Karcher snow foam was lacking, it didn't allow me to control the thickness of the foam. Obviously, with this lance and uh, from Autobrite Direct and this PA snow foam lance from Polish Bliss, you've got that mechanism so you're able to control the um, consistency and the thickness of the foam. <coughs> um, to be perfectly honest with you, I t on the plus, you've got the plus and the minus sign here. On this lance, the Autobrite Direct lance, and the Polished bliss, bliss, polished bliss snow foam lance. I tend to leave the dart all the way towards the minus sign, and then just turn it back a few stops to ensure that there's a little bit of water. I don't want to cut like mousse thick, um, because then it will just drip off, and you know it's just a waste. I like it to be slightly thick, but also like to get to like to ensure that it clings long enough for it to do the business and you know loosen some of that dirt and grime. So yeah. It, this lance and the Polish Bliss lance, really good. Um, and yeah, they're both made by PA in Italy, which is really good. The other lance that I've got is um, the MTM PF22. This is also a very good lance. And um, apologies, I didn't actually mention the fact that you can control the direction of spray. There's an actual blade in here, you can twist this. Um, let's see, twist this, let me see if I can get this to focus on here, but um, yeah, you can see that the blade, I've just closed the blade, but then you can actually open it. I tend to leave this partially open with a little bit of gap in between the, the, the blades, well they call it the fans, but I call it the blades, because I did actually cut myself with this once. Uh, but the reason why I leave this partially open is that it gives you a nice wide fan sort of spray so that, you know, in my opinion, it makes the foaming of the vehicle a lot more efficient. You just walk one side of the vehicle and go along and because it, the, the spray pattern is like a fan, it gives you a, a really wide spray pattern so it ensures you're able to cover the whole car, or one, at least one, the side of the car that you're doing in one go and, you know, it's highly unlikely you're going to miss spots and if you do you can just go over it really quickly whereas if you close um, leave this wide open you know it just spews out uh, and you know it's just concentrating like one point which I feel is highly inefficient but you know I'm not going to go into that too much because I'm sure there's people out there that will disagree and I'm not here to you know start a debate on that front um, you know, at the end of the day, we've all got our preferences, and my preference is to have um, a fan spray. Okay. Um, now, the reason why I actually mentioned that, or mentioned that, was because I actually wanted to come on to that in relation to the MTM PF22 foam lance, because the this thing has a, uh, a really good option on it. Um, so, again, similar to the PA lances. Um, from All Top Right Direct and um, the Polish Bliss one. 
again, it has a blade in here, okay? However, um, with this, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up again, but um, you can actually, there you go, that's probably a bit better. Hopefully you'll be able to see this a bit better. There you go, so again, you can open the blade and control it. I tend to leave it like this because I don't want it to, to sort of be concentrating in one particular area. However, with this one, you can actually um, twist it so that you change the spraying pattern. So if I twist it this way, it's now in this direction. And then again, similarly, you can open it and close it. But again, I would leave it closed. But I don't tend to do it in this way. Um, you know, but it, it's an option. Okay, I tend to leave it in this vertical position. You know, I think it's a lot more easy and more, more efficient. Um, with the difference with this actual particular lance, uh, again, it does have the control mechanism on it. Uh, so you've got the plus minus. Let's see if I can, you know, brighten the picture a little bit. You'll be able to see, hopefully. You've got the plus minus sign there again. The difference with this one is you have to leave this all the way on the plus sign. On the PA lance and you know the auto bright direct lance I was talking about, that on that one I put it all the way on minus, but on this one I put it all the way on plus. Um, I don't know why, it's just a, a difference between the two lances, but basically if you put it all the way on the plus sign, it makes the foam a lot more thicker. Uh, so that's the idea behind it. Okay, um, so I think I've talked quite a bit about the lances that I've got. Oh, you will notice that I've got different connections. So this is the actual quick release connection on here. And on the Auto Bright Lance, I've also got the quick release connection as well. Um, that's purely because I've actually changed the um, the gun that I use. Um, so yeah, um, I, I no longer use like the Karcher gun, uh, because, well, namely because I've got a Kranzel pressure washer now. I still have my uh, a Karcher, a Karcher K7, so hence why I've got, still got the the Karcher sort of connection for a PA Snow Foam Lance, but um, yeah, that, that I thought I'd just explain why there's different connections on here. And so obviously, you know, these foam lances, they do come with different connections, uh, you cannot, depending upon the pressure washer that you've got, so you know, in any case, if you do decide to buy one of these, please check that the relevant stockist holds um, the relevant connection for your pressure washer before buying it. Okay, um, right, so I've talked quite a bit about the snow foam lances. I think it's um, quite important for me to now discuss the water flow rates issue uh, because that can have an impact upon um, how thick your foam is or how, you know, it has a massive impact on the consistency of your foam and also the hardness of the water in your area and that plays a major major role. I don't know if any of you guys have seen the Harvey water um, demonstration but you know they from what they show I don't know how true it is you know people out there who are watching this video may be a lot more knowledgeable than I am but um, the harder the water the less sort of sudsy or you know soapy or foamy um, the solution tends to be if you put like some sort of uh, detergent in there Whereas if it's softened water, it froths up a lot more. So yeah, absolutely can have an impact as to how thick your foam is. Um, another thing is um, the pressure output of your pressure washer. That also has an impact and determines how thick the foam is. Uh, for example, when I had the, um, the Karcher K2, I did realize the foam, even though I had changed the lance um, on there, because originally the, the Karcher lance was, was poor. It was really poor, it was very runny. Uh, and the, the foam wouldn't clean. It wasn't even foam, it's just like, you know, solution really. Uh, but yeah, when I actually did buy a foam lance for, for that particular pressure washer, again, you know, it wasn't great. It was slightly better, but it was still runny. However, you know, that's purely because of the fact, I can't remember what output it was, but the pressure was a lot lower. I think if I'm not mistaken, having looked into this to a degree, um, you need to have, I think, a minimum of about 120 bar or so uh, to have a decent consistency of foam. Now I think the the, car, the cartridge K to a sub uh, 120 bar. I might be mistaken, but I'll, you know I'll, I'll put um, further commentary in in the video if if I am mistaken. 
Okay, so yeah, I'll, next thing I'm going to discuss is flow rates. Um, enough of me waffling on about pressure washers and snow foam lances. Uh, I will discuss flow rates and show you an approximation as to how you can actually measure your flow rate. So, catch you in a bit. So you should be able to see on this bucket, there's a faint black line that I've marked on the bucket. That indicates that's the 15 litre mark. I'll just point it to my finger here very briefly. It's very light. So it's a plastic bucket, so the pen mark isn't sort of adhering to the, the plastic very well. But that indicates the 15 litre mark. So as part of the um, trial around water flow rates, um, I'll be using that as my indication as to how quickly it reaches the 15 litre mark. And then from there, we'll do the calculation as to the flow rate with respect to the water coming out from the tap. So you'll see from the shot now that that's exactly at 15 litres and uh, we'll now go ahead and carry out the calculation to see how long it took to reach 15 litres and then from there we can work out the flow rate. We're now going to carry out the calculation um, so based on the capacity of the bucket uh, or the line that I marked on the bucket it was 15 litres that was the uh, target we were looking to achieve so 15 litres okay that was reached uh, in 29.580 seconds um, as per the timer that was listed um, on the previous frame. Now, what we'd like to know is how long, you know, how much would be, we be able to fill at the same rate in a minute. So therefore, our unknown quantity is let's call it x okay just a bit of basic algebra so you've got 15 liters over 29.58 seconds so I'll just write this down in seconds okay and we want to know how much we we would be able to fill in 60 seconds okay so we've got 59 liters over 29.580 seconds equals x which is our unknown quantity divided by 60 which is 60 seconds um, okay and that's basically what we're looking to find out in terms of a minute how much we'd, we would be able to achieve in terms of liters in a minute so what we in order to work out what x is we now need to do some cross multiplication so you have 29.580 x equals 15 times 60 okay now based on my man maths i think 15 times 60 is about 900 Let's work out on excel very quickly um let's just double check this 15 times 60 yep yeah, it's 900 okay so therefore 29.580 x equals 900 okay and therefore x equals 900 divided by 29.580 which equals i'll just tell you in a minute 900 divided by 29.580 and that gives you 30.42 five nine six liters okay now I appreciate the um, measurement is really an approximation you you probably need to buy some specialist tools to measure your flow rate however this is a good way of looking at how or you know looking at how much flow you're getting from your tap or your source okay and this will then help you to determine the type of pressure washer that you're able to buy uh, because if your tap is only producing, you know, seven litres per minute, 
it is nigh on impossible for you to run a pressure washer that demands 11 or 12 liters per minute okay it just doesn't make sense so you need to ensure that you work out your flow rate and then on the basis of the result of, that you achieve from that that determines the type of pressure washer that you can buy so hopefully that's been helpful to an extent so this part of the video is going to be looking at you know measuring the hardness of the water in your area um, you'll see here I've got a cup or a glass actually I've pre-filled it with a bit of water for my tap it's from my kitchen tap so it's probably not entirely accurate in the sense that you know it's not from my garden tap however you know they're both near enough come from the same mains pipe anyway so you know we should be able to get gauge an understanding as to you know um, the hardness of the water okay so I'm just gonna show you or bring into view this particular tool that I have and um, it should say TDS on it okay uh, it's a TDS meter okay TDS stands for total dissolved solids okay so it just measures uh, this tool here that I've got in my hand it measures the impurity or you know yeah measures the impurities within the water that are dissolved um, so they could be various items such as you know calcium or various bits and pieces actually I'm not going to go into specifics but it does measure you know how pure the water is so this is the uh, tool here I'm now going to take this out and give you a demonstration as to how you can measure the um, TDS level within your water so this is the actual tool it's plastic it looks quite ancient in the sense that you know the color of the plastic but I sh you know it does the business so I'm just gonna show you how you measure that you'll see here it's got um, I'm not sure if it's gonna come into shot but it's got a hold button at the top it's got a temperature button in the middle and um, you've got the on off button at the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and then measure it okay so they're actually on the plastic thing itself there is a level here I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it um, but there you go so it's a bit dark in this room there's a little sort of notch on here a little marker which is to show you how deep you need to put this in the glass or you know whichever source you're using to measure the water so I'm just going to put this in here now okay and once I've reached the level I'm then going to leave it there for a moment and then I'm going to press the hold button okay now I've measured the water in um, my glass okay I'll just see if I can get this into focus a bit awkward doing this the wrong way around okay here we go we'll do it this way okay so hopefully you'll be able to see it shows 390 ppm uh, which I believe stands for 390 particles uh, per million okay if I'm not mistaken I'll, I'll put in commentary within the video if that's not correct okay um, so now that I've shown you how you measure the water and I'll actually discuss what this result actually means and whether it is actually very hard or whether it's safe or whether it's medium hardness okay so as you can see here we've got uh, a table which lists the various types of rating that you can get um, based upon the readings that you obtain from your TDS meter so if you recall from the previous screenshot the reading that I obtained was 390 parts per million which based on this table signifies that it's a good rating okay um, so the water is of a good quality thankfully so you know whatever I'm drinking is safe but um, from the perspective of cleaning a car it's not ideal okay because there is still uh, the fact that there is a number greater than zero highlights the fact that there is impurities within the water okay now what this means technically well not technically but what this means is basically if I was to say for example rinse my car down uh, with the water from the tap without any filtration and if I was to leave that to dry on a baking hot summer's day um, which you know we don't get many of them in the UK but um, what that would mean is it's bound to leave um, residue okay and that's purely the mineral deposits from the water just drying on the paintwork okay now we can overcome this okay um, now the way that you would overcome this is if you were to have like a, a filtration system within your household 
Um, so, or you could have like um, a deionized water resin filter system. I do actually have one, but I don't use it because it's not the cheapest to use. Okay, um, but you know that that is an option for 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 yourselves when detailing your vehicle. If you're a mobile based detailer, um, then you know I, I'm aware that a lot of these guys they do use um, the spotless water because it's purified water and it. Got, I think it's zero parts per million, uh, which basically ensures that if they were to leave a customer's vehicle just soaked in that water, it would be able to dry naturally without leaving any residue, because there's no mineral deposits within the water because it's pure purified. The other option, as well as you know, well, putting the deionized resin system to a side, uh, there is something else that you can look at, which is a, a reverse osmosis system. Again, I'm not the most technically gifted person and um, I don't know much about it but it is another water filtration system or it's a pr another process that can be uh, undertaken via specialist equipment so that is something else for you to consider and um, what other benefits are there from having uh, a zero you know purified water well you know the other benefits are you know as I mentioned earlier on in the video um, it does mean that your water is likely you know, if you, any detergent that you put in water is likely to foam up a lot more because there's less or there is no impurities within the water okay um, so that's another benefit of using purified water so one is you know it's not gonna leave any water spotting if you drive a vehicle the other benefit is you get more suds or more foam or more or more, more soap as a result as a result of there being no impurities within the water so hopefully that's explained things on the water hardness front so we've now reached the conclusion section of this video. Um, so we've covered a number of different topics uh, during the course of this video. We've covered foam lances, we've covered flow rates, we've covered water hardness, and we've also covered two degree pressure washers. So four things we've covered during the course of this video. So if you're new to detailing, my recommendation would be definitely to buy one of the three foam lances that I've got. Uh, so either the PA Snow Foam Lance from uh, Polish Bliss, or the PA Snow Foam Lance by Autobrite Direct, or the MTM PF22. You don't need to be a nutter like me and buy all three. Um, however, you know having two foam lances can be beneficial because it allows you to put in different products in each lance and use them during the course of a detail. Okay. Um, the next sort of remark, closing remark that I would have is, you know, if you are you know, looking to buy a good pressure washer, please ensure you measure your flow rate first of all, just to see what output you get from your tap uh, which will then determine the type of pressure washer you can buy because you need to ensure that you've got sufficient water flow to cater for the pressure washer's needs. Uh, you might also be able to you know use like a water butt or um, you know say you have water stored in a static system and you can also look to buy a pressure washer that is able to draw from a static source um, in which case you know water flow rates don't matter so much okay but that's another topic but you know that's something that you should also consider as well if you do want to buy a slightly more powerful pressure washer but you don't have a you know sufficient flow rate then you know can that pressure washer draw from a static source that might be something that you need to look at okay i also discussed um you know um in terms of pressure in my view i think you need to buy a minimum buy a pressure washer that produces a minimum of 120 bar to get you know decent enough horsepower to clean the car firstly and secondly, to generate you know a decent amount of foam, okay. Um, anything below 120 bar doesn't tend to in my in my experience doesn't generate sufficient foam. But there might be others out there that disagree with me. But that's just purely based on my experience with the Koch K2 that I had, okay. Now um, I know we discussed water hardness during the course of this video, and I did mention that I do have a DI resin filter, but I don't use it. I'll be honest, it's not a massive thing for me because I've got a pressure washer that generates sufficient foam. However, the only way I could see this being beneficial, as I mentioned during the course of the video, is one is for, you know, I could rinse the vehicle off with a deionized water and just leave the vehicle to dry naturally and it's not going to produce any water, water spots. Um, that could be beneficial in the summer, especially, uh, as opposed to using the tap water, which would, which is bound to leave hard, you know, hard water spots. Um, also, you know, the other benefit of it is that you get more foam or more suds or more soapy water, you know, if you were to put detergent in 
a bucket filled with purified water. So those are the benefits, you know, I'll leave that down to yourself to determine whether this is something you wish to consider. I think most people go without it unless you're a professional detailer, a professional, you know, professional detailer, unit based or mobile based. Uh, I think they, those guys tend to use purified water um, because, you know, it just makes more sense and you don't want to, you know, spend ages trying to remove water spots on a customer's vehicle. So I hope you found that beneficial. Um, and if you do have any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments box below. Hope to catch you soon. Take care. Bye.